ability to enforce this against out-of-state companies? They will, just the same as the enforcement today at Springfield Running Center at Bike Tech. If you made sales here and didn't collect sales tax, they'll catch up with you and at some point say, you owe us sales tax. We can do the same thing through internet sales. But those are Illinois companies incorporated in Illinois. You've got venues in that way to do that. How can you go against a company that's in Delaware or Nevada well, or in Europe or wherever? Clearly, they make a disclosure each month of the sales made and the sales tax collected and repaid back to the state. Each of these internet companies will have the same obligation. How does this address the, uh, the constitutional question? The Supreme Court raised I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, about states uh, taxing interstate commerce. Well, I think it gets around it because you are actually selling into a state, and at that situation would be collecting retail sales in that state, uh, retail sales tax in that state. So that to me is not an inter it, it's not an encumbrance on interstate sales any more than to have a person from Missouri show up at the Springfield Running Center to buy some shoes and say, I just crossed the state line, therefore I don't owe you Illinois sales tax. Well, of course you do. You made the purchase at an establishment here, and one that has uh, been recognized under Illinois law. And the same thing would apply here. We make this a national standard that if you're going to sell to the residents of a state, you will collect the sales tax of the state of that resident. Does it use the, uh, and I forget the technical t name for it, the uh, streamlines, streamlined tax collection uh, formula as a basis? Yes, it makes it a nation nationwide basis. It would make it, but it, it would be up to the states to... Uh, now, I understand about 24 of them have already adopted that, but uh, and maybe not Illinois. No, but Illinois, it would make them, it would apply to all states. And That's would, the idea. But it would be it. voluntary for them to adopt it, or they would be mandatory? No, every state would be Required. under under it. It would be a national standard at that point. Okay. And, and so states would not have to have a reciprocal agreement to, to if, again, if a, a Illinois is trying to collect taxes from a Nevada company, you wouldn't have to have some, this, the, the Nevada company would be required under this law to abide That's right. by that. That's what right. What about an international company, though, if they're based in Canada or Europe or wherever? Good question, and I don't know the answer, Jim, but my assumption is that they would, they would apply to them as well. If they're making a sale in the United States, they would need to, to uh, uh, collect the sales tax on that sale. I'll double check on that. But can that be enforced? I mean, is, is that, some, again, if they just choose to defy it, you know, how do you stop them from selling to an Illinois customer? It's a good point. And we run into this, incidentally, on Internet gambling. Because even though we prohibit it on a nationwide basis, it's being done. Uh, I'm afraid it's being done entirely too much uh, on uh, international Internet websites. So enforcement becomes a trickier thing when we're dealing with international. Um, one of the arguments often brought up against this is that I internet sales are a growth industry at a time when the economy needs more growth industries. I know you said they've had a long time to establish, but could this not in fact crimp sales and reduce economic activity by uh, imposing what it, in effect they would perceive as a, as a higher tax on their sales? I'll go a step further. I think small business in America is a growth industry too. And if we want it to continue to grow, we can't put it at a competitive disadvantage. The Internet sales operations are clearly established across the United States. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. And if we want to make sure that local businesses and small businesses have a fighting chance, a competitive chance, then we have to have a level playing field. There has been a call for legislation like this for some years now, and it's I mean, the Internet has been doing all right for a couple of years as well. Why now? Was this spurred by Illinois' action and these affiliate retailers moving out and such? You know, I supported uh, this way back when, 10 years ago. I thought it was fair then, and I didn't win. The, the prevailing sentiment, as expressed here, was give these Internet sales operations a chance to get started. Okay, they've had their chance. And the way I see it, it is clearly a system of ec or a question of economic justice. How in the world can we ask all of these small businesses in localities to be collecting taxes and then exempt their competitors? It just doesn't make sense to me. And I think we're in a compelling situation. People have come to me and said, well, what's the federal government going to do to help all these states and localities that are all struggling in some way, shape, or form with pension obligations and other problems that they have with the recession? And I've said quite candidly, with our federal deficit, we're not going to have a big bailout for you. But I do think we can help you collect revenue, which I think should be coming your way. It'll be a part of a helping hand and it'll establish, as I mentioned, at the risk of beating a dead horse, leveling the playing field. Was it appropriate for Governor Quinn to have signed the Illinois version of a Main Street Fairness Act? Oh, sure, Act and absolutely. Listen, every governor is struggling to find a way to collect this tax legally. And there are impediments and obstacles. That's why we need federal legislation, so that it applies across the board. Is this in bill form yet? 
It will be. Uh, in fact, it is in form. It has been introduced. I don't have a bill number for you, but you it will be. Sponsored yet? Uh, no, not yet. Do our local.